In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. طيب. Today, inshallah, we have a very nice topic, Al-Jannah. <laughs> we reach to verse 25, alhamdulillah, of chapter Al-Baqarah. Just a very quick reminder, تذكير يا إخوة ويا أحبة إن we are trying to deal with the Quran in a very simple language to do tafsir in a way that most of the people can understand and inshallah it is designed in a way to help you to explain Islam even to non-Muslims inshallah okay so this is like the methodology that I'm trying to uh, present the information with from one angle now what we have done so far that we said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this what do you call it constitution system of life the main purpose is al hidayah please fix it in your mind I will keep repeating the major concepts because if you understand them very well everything else will be easy this constitution, dustur, system of life, nidam haya, designed by Allah for humanity. Okay? However, Allah decided to let the first group of people to have it, Arabs. Arabs are not the only Muslim and they are not choosing to be the only good Muslims on earth. Any Arab who refuses Islam is a non-believer. And Jannah, you know Jannah, you know? The hellfire is waiting for him. Just thank him, it's just a matter of time. You are most welcome. Welcome, 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 Mr. Arab. If you refuse Islam, no. We don't have the concept of choosing people in Islam. We have it, but with a slight beautiful change. You know what is it? You choose to be chosen. You decide. Allah will not decide on your behalf. This is the difference between us and others. It's your decision to be from those whom Allah loves. You will be chosen because you decided. Not because someone else has decided and it's part of the fate. No. You decide, you are chosen people. <laughs> That's it. So anyone on earth can be in Islam. What? From the chosen people. This is very important. Because once you submit, you declare you become. Okay? What we are doing now. We said this constitution, this system of life, this guidance. Huh? Allah sent hudan lin nas we started to understand this revelation is a constitution we said constitution should be brief that's why allah sent muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a teacher muallim as an explainer sharih for this constitution practically or that we have the explanation which is the authentic sunnah and the sunnah basically at what the prophet said did, reacted upon, accepted or rejected. All of these things are called authentic, what? Sunnah. Okay? So, now in this constitution, the Quran, we are trying to understand or to deal with the Quran as if it's a living being. And by the way, keep in your mind as well, that the miracle of Islam is the Quran. <laughs> Unlike all previous prophets and messengers. Prophets and messengers before us, they were supported always with the tangible assets, with a physical miracle that can be seen, can be touched, can be realized physically. Okay? Prophet Muhammad's message, uh, sorry, miracle was not the physical direct one. The reason, all of them before him, they were sent just for a specific time 
group geographical location. This is our faith. So Nuh was sent to his people, Abraham to his people, Moses to his people, i.e. the people of Israel, Jesus Christ, Isa alayhi salam, to the people of Israel. That's why he was given the direct physical miracles. You direct, you see, you believe. Believer or non-believer, file, close the file, story is finished. Prophet Muhammad was sent for humanity to the day of judgment. So you need the miracle to stay generations by generation for everyone. That's why it was this book. Because anyone can say, Wallahi, I did not witness the miracle by myself. So don't tell me about, no, 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 no. This is the miracle, go. And I will keep reminding you with, what's his name, do you remember? You have to remember the British police. What's his name? Richard? Yes, Jazakallah. Richard Varley. Please go and listen to him. Richard Varley. It's an example out of thousands of examples. When he read the verses about physics, geology, or something like that, we have created the heavens by might and power and we are expanding. Then he read, well, Jibala Autada. We have smoothed the earth and we made mountains as widges or pigs. He said, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> How did this Arab desert man, i.e. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, know this information even though we have just discovered this now? This is geology. This is physics. This is a very complicated theoretical phys physics. You know, who, who did know that the universe is expanding? Who knew that? So this is a miracle. And I keep reminding to you, please keep in your mind this book, which is a constitution, a brief constitution for guidance, it touches. It knocks the door of your heart, of your mind. It does not give you all the details. This is not a book of history. However, it contains historical information. It's not a book of science. However, it contains 1,000 indication of science inside it, okay? <laughs> so it's a book of guidance, Six around 6,400 verses, around 93,000 words, 114 chapters. We started with chapter one, which is the opening. We had an idea. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the very beginning with the biggest chapter, which is Al-Baqarah, he is teaching us, or as if, I would say it in my words, as if Allah is telling us, look, my people, you are divided in my sight into a mu'min and kafir. Clearly. Alif lam mim, dhalik al kitab wal arayb fi hudan lil muttaqin. He's telling us clearly, by the way, no one can force you to accept it. I'm just telling you what's inside it. If you want to accept it, alhamdulillah, please, it will be yours and you can be the first of us. If you refuse it, face the consequences. It's not my problem, it's your problem. <laughs> Go and meet Allah. When Allah asks you, why did you refuse? Prepare an answer. If you have an answer, may Allah protect you. If you don't have an answer, may Allah be with you. <laughs> Wallah, it's very simple. One of the greatness of Islam that is very clear. One plus one equals two. No complicated things. No ambiguity. We don't have gumud. You see? You know, because we say, no, 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 clear. One plus one equals two. That's it. Accept, you are a Muslim. Reject, you are an unbeliever. You accept, you will be rewarded. You reject, hellfire will waiting for you. Very, <laughs> very simple. Very easy. So I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us at the very beginning that we have a muttaqin. He gave us the main description of those muttaqin from the believers. Immediately, he told us about the non-believers who, who rejected. Then he gave us a description. Then he made a specific group from non-believers, made like a zoom in amazingly on them, which is the hypocrites, the munafiqeen. Okay? And we were told in some other accounts, they are from the non-believers. The big umbrella is the non-believers. Inside them, we have hypocrites. Those who say something, claim something, act in something, and inside they have something else. They are the worst of the non-believers. So be careful. As if the Quran is telling you, two main categories, the worst of them. 
Okay? Then, last time we finished second episode in our 18th episode, that after Allah highlighted the two big main categories and the worst of the second category, he was addressing humanity in general. Ya ayyuhan nasu ubudu rabbakum. We highlighted how come Allah is addressing a non-believers, which includes agnostics, atheists, half-half, other religions, all of them. How come? We explained the common ground by the concept of the fitra and the common sense. If you remember the idea of the bombs and the, uh, you know, the, the, the fields of mines and any signs that's warning you to do or not to do or the borders or whatever that the common sense. And we brought some kind of examples from Ali At-Tantawi about the attitude of the people towards the hereafter by resembling or highlighting the example of the group of fishermen in the Pacific Ocean Island. And we highlight, finished this. After Allah highlighted these things for us, Ahmed, Ya Ahmed, can you close the uh, windows, channel uh, sounds of the kids, please? Yes, uh, please. Uh. Jazakallah khair. <coughs> Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Barakallah fikum. If, if, uh, brother, if, if they close that, I mean, it's okay for that. I mean, uh, as long as, I'm, uh, I, I, as, as long as their voice does not reach me, خلاص, it's okay. Jazakallah khair for the brothers, inshallah. What I was saying, I'm sorry, I, I lose completely my concentration when someone is uh, screaming. Yeah. Fisherman? Yeah, USSR and like... Which fisherman? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, the Pacific fisherman. Like, you know, Pacific? Like Who's Tantawa? <laughs> Yalla, talla al ra. <laughs> exam, quick <laughs> quiz, yalla. <laughs> no, I remember, I'm just kidding. Jazakallah khair. Okay, so we finished that. Today, Allah is after he highlighted clearly. This is what should be how. Now, he started to tell us about the rewards of the believers. وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ amen. Today, what I will be doing, we will be talking about the Jannah. Why the Jannah? How should be looking to the Jannah? What kind of value should the Jannah, the paradise, have in our system of faith, belief? How we should be depending, thinking, imagining, depending on what, and all of this stuff around that. Let's read the verse that we have reached. Out of which is 25. وبشر الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أن لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار كلما رزقوا منها من ثمرة الرزق قالوا هذا الذي رزقنا من قبل وأتوا به متشابها ولهم فيها أزواج مطهرة وهم فيها خالدون. The quick translation before making specific points because as I told you I'm trying to deal with concepts not with, with verses and words so I need the concept today's session is the concept of Jannah depending on the order of the chapter okay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says give good news O prophets to those who believe and do good that they will have gardens in paradise beneath which rivers flow Whenever provided with, sorry, whenever provided with fruits, they will say, this is what we have given before. For they will be served fruits that look similar, but taste different. They will have pure spouses and they will be there forever. Now, before I start talking about the importance of uh, good news and the glad tidings, it's good to keep reminding yourself that the big, big image of our existence, big image, depends on the idea that there is a God who is Allah, decided to create our father and our mother, Adam and Eve. Then he decided to let them be on earth. And we are here, clearly, under the title of لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ amala. And under the title of وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Two big things. We are here 
to worship Allah with the general meaning of worship. And all the time we are under the big umbrella of trial and tests. The end result of the existence and the big trial basically is the concept of reward and punishment. Story is finished. Story is finished. We were created by Allah. He decided to let us be on earth. In this earth, we are here. Clearly, it's not my conclusion. It's directly what Allah has said. Directly. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have created, I have not created jinn and ins, but to worship me. And I have highlighted many times the concept of worship. Do you remember? The general big submission for the will of your Lord in every single aspect. Type the end result. It's either or. No third option. What's the either or? Punishment or reward? The punishment in the hellfire, the, the reward in the Jannah. <laughs> the whole story of our existence is this. It's very simple, by the way. Really very simple. Now the point is... It's just up to you. I have to make just a simply quick pause now. Anyone can say, Sheikh, I me forget it. <laughs> Who cares? By the way, you have the right to say that. But I have to tell you what. Prepare yourself for the consequences. <laughs> I don't believe you. I'm me face it. I believe and I'm afraid from my Lord. You want to face him? Yeah, you are no more braver than me. <laughs> That's why I must keep reminding you with the concept of what if. Do you remember it? What if? It's a, like a quick debate between a non-believer and a believer. Mr. Non-believer is mocking, making fun of the believer. Hey, you believer. You stupid Idiots, wasting your time instead of enjoying life, go drink, have, do, X, Y, Z, just enjoy it. It's must have believer, but we created, oh, I don't believe in that, but we were told, I don't believe in that. Mm, no, 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 you are stupid. Okay, then we made this comparison, I say, Mr. Non-Believer is telling the believer that he is an idiot, stupid person who's wasting his time. So Mr. Believer humbly is telling Mr. Non-Believer. He said, look, if what you believe in happened to be true when I pass away, I will lose nothing because I will be nothingness. So, but, you know but? <laughs> but, uh, by, by the way, most of the problems comes after but. You say, da, 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 da. but, okay, after the but, because the but sometimes it changes everything that you have highlighted. Okay? But, what if what I believe in happened to be true, Mr. Non believer? You say that there is no akhirat or no akhira or no hereafter. By 50%. Mash, you said. Okay. You are wasting your time. You are an idiot. Don't, you, ha you have the full right. Forget ethics. Just eat, drink, steal, kill, do whatever. Enjoy life in your way. You are the God of yourself. Okay. Let's imagine 50% you are true, saying the truth. But consider mine. What if there is accountability and everything is true? Just consider it. I'm not pushing you to accept it. I'm asking you to rethink about the possibility. What if... When you ignore the possibility completely, by the way, this is not an emotional approach. This is a pure mathematical, logical approach. Uh, please keep, you know, because our, my point now is not just talking about the Jannah. No, 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 no. How we will be approaching the Jannah and why? The point is not just, okay, let's talk about Jannah. But what if you have doubt about the Jannah? I'm wasting my time with you. <laughs> Are you with me? The point is not just Jannah. You need to be sure you have what we call yaqeen, certainty, that what we are discussing is the best choice. And there is nothing better than it. Because you will keep thinking, oh, I'm wasting, no, no, I'm not wasting your time. 
you are saving yourself. <laughs> you have to full trust in what you have believed in. Or otherwise, really you are wasting your time. <laughs> okay? So, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Now, where's my... <clears throat> Do you remember that we used to say all the time in our lives as believers that we educated in the concept of always say, what is your purpose in life? Because read Allah and Al-Jannah. We always repeat this, okay? That Allah to be satisfied from me and the Jannah. And, and many times, some of, many of us we say, I want just Allah to be satisfied. I want to please Allah. I want Allah not to be angry with me. The practical application of the satisfaction of Allah from you and me basically will be embedded in where? In the Jannah. Because part of our basic life, basically that we will pass away. Because let's talk about the big picture. <laughs> this same big picture we are created, living for a short time. This worldly life. Ibadah and trial, test. Then our souls will be removed from our bodies. Souls will be kept in what we call Alam Al-Barzakh, okay, which is the barrier where we have Naim Al-Jannah and, uh, sorry, Naim Al-Qabr and Adab Al-Qabr, both, which is the pleasure and the judgment of the grave, which is the minimum of the, let's say, pleasure that you would say, then you will go like a long sleep, then you will we wake up at the beginning of the day of judgment, do you remember? And we highlighted this. Then we have the accountability, the day of judgment. It's a huge day. It starts with resurrection and congregation. We will be gathered, then we will have the accountability. The end of the accountability, it will be either or. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be all from people of the Jannah. Mm -hmm. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ What is Bashir? Now first message of today's lesson. Bishara means Al-Akhbar Sarra. Bashar means give the good news. O Muhammad, give them the good news. They will be rewarded with the Jannah. But what is the Jannah? Before I explain what is the Jannah, and today I have brought from the whole Quran about 11 places where Allah is describing this beautiful treasure, the Jannah. Okay? But before that, Allah says, Wa Bashar, good news. Who is saying this? Allah. Imagine if just a normal king a normal president just made a phone call with you. Hey, Muhammad, hey, Naeem, Ali, Abdullah, whatever. Good news. I will invite you to my palace and you will be a multi-billionaire. How, how do you think you will feel? If someone told you, guys, if someone told you that, glad tidings, you have won a Ferrari. <laughs> Can you sleep? <laughs> Can you sleep that night? <laughs> but if you were told that, good news, you have won $10 billion. By the way, you have not obtained them yet. You've been told good news by telephone. Come and collect them. Still, maybe after one week or 10 days. What kind of feeling you will be having? <laughs> You have one, khalas, it's in your name, it's for you. But maybe to collect them, you need to travel. You need to travel. You need to have a ticket. You need to issue a new valid passport. This could take 10 days, 15 days, 20 days, whatever. But what's about your feeling? You think there is a person? Yes, mashallah. Ex it's excellent. I think no one will be happier than you. Like, but someone might ask you, excuse me, have you taken the money? No. But you feel happy, why? <laughs> Depending on what? On a promise. Are you with me? <laughs> Let's think about the Bishar. I want you to make the resemblance. To say, if you won, God forbid, God forbid, if you won a lottery, because this is the only uh, example that the people that use it, which is gambling, which is not allowed in Islam, you know. But in theory, I'm talking mathematically. If you say, congratulations, good news, Mr. Muhammad, Mr. Ahmad, you win $10 million. Wallah, maybe you will lose your mind. 
up. You have not taken the money yet. If you trust in the system that they will give it to you after, let's say, 30 days, the adrenaline inside your body will be 24-7 happy. You will maybe go and forgive everyone. You will go and solve and will fix all of your problems because you are happy. But ya ammi, you have not taken not even one dollar. You have trust that they will pay you. Even though, let me just give you this chalk. Is there a 100% guarantee that you will have them? Hmm? No, 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 I'm not talking about discount. I mean, mathematically, is there a possibility that you might not have them? Yeah. Give me why options. Mathematical, logical options. Number one. When you drive to go get it, you get an accident. Yes, an accident. <laughs> then you go to heaven. <laughs> No money, brother. <laughs> brother, you are in heaven. No money. <laughs> Top number one. Number two. Huh? Error. Who said it? Yes. They made a mistake with your name. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, baby. <laughs> Disappointment. Another possibility. It's a logical possibility. Tayyip. Third possibility. Yeah. A war breaks out and the lottery center gets bombed. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Well, I, it's similar to something in my mind. An earthquake happened and everything vanished. <laughs> yani, mathematically, there is no certainty or 100% guarantee to have them. Yet, you stayed all the time happy. Let's make the example now. Allah is promising. <laughs> Not the lottery administrator. Not Mr. Trump, not X, no, 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 no. It's Allah who's promising, Bashir. If you do such and such, I'm welcoming you in my Jannah. That's the importance of believing in Allah. If you know that Allah within his names and attributes, Allah does not die. al Qawi, the most powerful. al Alim, al Qadir. So Allah will not face any possible of defects or deficiency or weakness which might made him in a status that he will not fulfill his promise. It's impossible. So once, once the promise has been made, it's just your turn to fulfill your duty. خلاص. So the, the hope is the possibility that your hope will be fulfilled is 100%. If we do it with a no guarantee, how come we would do it with a full guarantee? This is my point. When I say, وبشر, okay, make this together. Why you trust? I used to ask my students in the university. You, I'm, I'm a university professor, you know. Since 17 years, I'm in university. I always to, to tell my students, mostly, uh, I taught PhD and a master's degree. But the BA students, sorry, uh, sorry, I said BA and master's degree. The BA student, I said, look, why do you study? Do you know Why do you study? I want to have a degree. Why do you degree? I want to work. Why do you want to work? To have money. Why? House, car, wife. Husband, kids, and that's it. Okay. I said, okay, what is the possibility, mathematical guarantee that, okay. Then I ask, how many hours do you study in four years average? Or five years if you are doing engineer? Or six or seven years if you are do doing medicine? The average, five years and a half. If you have 130 credit hours, which means three hours a week for four years, or 170 credit hours, okay? The average, the average of the hours that you will be sitting in a class listening is around 2,000 hours. If you want to calculate the hours that you study in addition to sitting in the class and thinking and sitting for the exams, it's around 3,500 hours for the sake of having what? A piece of cartoon they call it degree and it will enable you to have a salary 
this salary might enable you to eat and drink in a good way. Can you imagine? And I ask them, okay, four hours, four hours of very, sorry, four years of killing yourself and working for a piece of cartoon to bring a salary. What is the guarantee to have it? It could be zero, mathematically. Yet, we keep doing four years, five years, six years, seven years. Ya ammi, where do you bring the hope from? Wallah ala amal. Ya Allah, ala Allah, ya Sheikh. Ya Allah. But there is a possibility the whole of your country will collapse. <laughs> there is no system, no degree, <laughs> no university. Look what happened in Iraq and Syria. In Iraq and Syria, complete political, social, Educational system completely was collapsed. All of people who have all kinds of degrees, they lost all of their official degrees because no proof, no university, no country. Because, you know, Mr. Bush decided to go to do a trip there in Iraq. They destroyed everything. No universities, no degree, خلاص, this thing is finished. Which means they started from zero. Yet, we did not lose hope. Hope in what? Hope in human beings? Hope in Americans? I'm seriously, Allah, I'm not joking. We, so we keep struggling doing, Ya Allah. Just make a pose. Make analogy now, Qiyas. You are dealing with Allah. Allah is promising you. Allah is controlling everything. And Allah is the only one who is able 100% to fulfill his promise. And he's welcoming you and giving you the full system. Just do your job. Why I do not have the hope? Why I'm not happy with the bishara, with the glad tidings of Allah? Is this emotions or common sense? By the, by, the, by the way, this is a pure common sense, logical common sense. I'm not using the language of emotions. It's one plus one equals two. Accept it or leave it, and that's it. Okay? Now, this is the first message. Second message. Allah stated clearly, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا plus Please fix this passage, sorry, this package in your mind. In Islam, we have Iman plus Amal Salih together. Don't separate them. In Islam, as more, if you want really to respect yourself, that you understand Islam, don't separate these from each other. Otherwise, you are simply just fooling yourself. Or hummusing yourself. <laughs> Have you noticed? Just Arabs. <laughs> Don't fool yourself. Type is Zabbaha. I'm sorry. They had hummus, but they didn't know the fool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, the point. <laughs> I can't translate it, by the way. Wow. Because I don't know the name in English. What does it mean in English? What? Really? Wallahi, I will listen to it. Okay. So I was saying, don't separate concept of Iman from the concept of Al-Amal Al-Salih. Iman, faith, belief from righteous good deeds. In Islam, we don't have them separated. They are together. Why I'm saying that? Because for many reasons, some good, nice Muslims, may Allah forgive them, they have developed their own version of Islam. The Islam of the white-hearted people. Islam, Al-Galb Al-Abiyad. You know them? You know them? Islam, Al-Galb Al-Abiyad. It's an Arabic version of Islam. Those who are influenced by some kind of tough, secular way of thinking, separating religion from life, you say, okay, it's true that I don't pray. It's true I don't wear the hijab. It's true that I drink alcohol. It's true that I have a boyfriend, girlfriend. It's true, it's true, it's true. But however, I have a white heart and I love Allah and Allah knows. So don't interfere between us, Sheikh. Go away. Allah knows my heart. And I know that Allah knows your heart. 
But this Allah who knows your heart, he is the one who said here, Amanu amru salihat. Wallahi, it's not me. This is not my Quran. <laughs> it's Allah's Quran. Say, Amanu amru salihat. Those who believed and did good deeds. So the bishara, the glad tidings are for who? For those who amanu. Because if there is no submission, which is a practical application, you are not accepted. I'm sorry to tell you that. Tayyip. Good deeds without iman. Waste of time. The passport, the visa. By the way, if it happened that you landed in Canada illegally, smugglers, they brought you somehow, you managed to come. You are an illegal person. The fact that you are inside Canada illegally does not give you the validity you are a Canadian citizen. <laughs> Even if you are the best person on earth. If you are all the time smiling in the face of the people, hi, nice, hello, I love you. We don't care. You are illegally, you are a non-Canadian. But I'm here. You have no legal status. Our legal status is Iman. <laughs> our visa, our passport is Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah. <laughs> Very simple. Type. You declare, you faith, you declared. Plus, yalla, prove it practically. Are you a good citizen? Yes. yes. Now, if you do it, you will have a legal status, which is the Iman. And you have the practical application, and you have proved practically you are a good. I'm just making simple, which is not something complicated because we do apply it in our daily life, wherever you go. So, Wabashir, Alhamdulillah, this is Bishara. We realize what is the Bishara. Glad tidings. Why, when, how? Number two, Amanu Amilu Salihat. We do not accept faith without Amal Salih or Amal Salih without. Faith. And by the way, Amal Saleh, good deeds without faith in our faith is not accepted. Make it clear because you will be facing a lot of argument about this. Many people ask you, yeah, and you want to tell me and Steve Jobs is not in the Jannah. Yeah, I'm Steve Jobs is better than 10 million Arabs altogether. Okay, and I agree with you. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not arguing with this. Yeah, and do you want to tell me that all of these millions of Muslims and believers, they did nothing compared with Bill Gates? I don't. Who told you that I'm arguing that they are uh, not uh, good people? Okay, they're good people. If we are discussing the Jannah, the owner of the Jannah, whose proper name is Allah, is saying, if you want to come to my Jannah, Accept me in my terms. Is it complicated? No. Someone said, excuse me, Allah, I don't believe in you. Okay, do we have such people? Yes. Tayyip, this person who decided to reject this God, he was leading a good life in our terminology. Yes, okay, good. Is there any reason that forces this God to let this good person who refusing this God to accept him in his Jannah, even though he does not believe in the God and his Jannah? The, on what base? Well, no, 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 no. He is in the Jannah. Yeah, I mean, he refuses the God and his Jannah. And, uh, why you enter feel like yourself in the middle? He is refusing. It's not your problem. <laughs> it's his problem with his Lord. Uh, sorry, this is my way, but make it clear. Because whenever an atheist passes away, you will find hundreds of the nice, cute, cool Muslims. You know them? Okay, you know, Abdullah, definitely, I, be I believe he is in the Jannah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Jannah is not your own property. The owner of the Jannah, the creator of the Jannah, <laughs> he decided the conditions. Wallah, it's not me. <laughs> No, 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 he is in Jannah, ghasban annak. Allah ghasban anni, ana. Is clear in your mind? So, ubashir al-lazina amanu wa 
عملوا الصالحات أن لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار Now Allah is described Look Let's come to a new concept now <coughs> What is the concept? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the very beginning جريان الماء والتنوع في الطعام والأزواج المطهرة Three main categories Allah highlighted them at the very beginning The flow of the water and the sound Then the very beautiful tasty food Then the spouses, the mates, the wives, the husbands that will be enjoying living together By the way, let's make a simple pause We human beings, forget faith for a moment Forget the akhirah for a moment Most of our lives when we strive to bring money We are seeking doing what? Practically, the multi-millionaires, when they have them regardless, whether they obtained it legally or illegally, by haram or by halal, when he becomes a multi-millionaire or billionaire, one of the most important things for anyone in power, in authority, in money, to achieve what? Happiness. happiness. The practical application of happiness in worldly life, through what? House, House a place, palace, villa, Piece of land, island, great places, a place to dwell and sit in. True or false? And to enjoy and a drink. And to have someone with him. M mainly we are talking most of the multimillionaires or the gangsters or the people in charge, they are men. So all the time they are seeking what? A woman or women with them. Don't we see this in our daily life? Did we witness it in 99.9999%? Have you ever seen in any Hollywood movie a very powerful man without a beautiful woman? I'm serious, seriously, I'm not joking. Always, whether they're good or bad, always. There is a girlfriend, uh, something we loved, defending her, uh, attacking her, killing her. But her, I mean, our life revolves around these two big main categories. A place to settle, Enjoy food and drink. Someone whom we love to enjoy living with. The story is finished. <laughs> That's it. So clearly, simply Allah is, as in my language, in my words, Allah is knocking our fitrah by the basics of our needs. You want to enjoy it? Fadl. Not very complicated. Um, and we are a very practical people. We don't accept this kind of philosophy. No, no, just be a believer just for the sake of the philosophical faith. Just enjoy philosophy. <laughs> no, no, no. Allah, he is the one who created us and he knows that all the time we are eager to enjoy. We, we feel hungry. We want to eat. <laughs> we want to enjoy our life. Okay. So by nature, he created us He gave us restrictions. If we followed his direction, we will enjoy all of our desires in full without any restrictions or any haram things. We'll enjoy it. So he created us to keep feeling the taste and the eager of the need and some kind of fulfilling of this. We eat, yes. But here, there, كُلَّمَا رُزِقُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ ثَمْرَةِ الرِّزْقًا قَالُوا هَذَا الَّذِي رُزِقْنَا مِنْ قَبْلُ وَأُتُوا بِهِ مُتَشَابِهَا The ayah is talking about that every day you will be eating a new type of food even though they are similar in colors or in the shape but completely every day a new taste, a new taste. What's this? Why do we go to new restaurants? For a new? Tasty, nice food. If you have a money and you have a time, and they told you there is a very nice new, for example, restaurant, uh, Italian cuisine, a Caucasian cuisine, uh, a Turkish cuisine. Well, well, yeah, yalla, please, that's a, oh, nice. You, you know the barbecue, you know, you see the meat, you know, you see the steaks, you know, all the time. Billah alaikum, when we enjoy food in a new place, how many hours do you spend talking about it? Talking, enjoying. Reviewing, <laughs> recommending, inviting. When can we enjoy any kind of social gathering without food? 
So look how Islam is great. Allah is tackling our basic needs. Place to live, okay? Food and drink to enjoy, and you're beloved. This is the basics. I'm not talking about everything. Now, this is that is simple, the Bishara, because as I told you, this is a constitution, and we are dealing with the first two pages of the constitution at the very beginning. Because consider yourself, God forbid, imagine that you are a non believer. Imagine that you know nothing about this new religion. Then you've been told that this religion is the system of the Lord of the universe, and He's inviting you to be part of this party. Okay, uh, tell me what He's telling me. So he will not go to the tiny details. He will give you just very quickly about the basics, like what I have done now. Okay, what's the idea in Islam? We are created by God. Why? To worship him. What's the meaning of worship? Full obedience. Why? You are on a test. Then you will be rewarded or you will be punished. Where I will go? Through death, you will be kept in the barzakh. Then there is day of judgment, accountability, then eternal life. Five minutes. Big questions of humanity during the history. You know the big questions? Who am I? Why I'm here? Who brought me? Who created me? What I'm supposed to do? Why? What will happen to me and why? These big questions, many people, they lost their lives without answers. In Islam, we don't have a problem with the answers. <laughs> we have the problem of applying what we know. <laughs> we have no doubt about the authenticity. We know the answers. We know how to answer our big questions. And we are sure it's completely coherent, direct to the point, no ambiguity, but just apply it. Yet, many of us, we don't care. Others, by the way, wallahi, others, they are suffering. Because they are not sure whether their book, Aslan, it is a book or a, <laughs> from God or not. Some of them, they don't have a religion, so they are lost. That's why you need to appreciate the ni'mah, the blessing that you are in. Now... I'm sorry, I did not expect that it will take me this time. However, what I have done so far, next time I will give you one of the most important verses in the whole Quran about the description of the Jannah. <laughs> okay? How we will be living in the Jannah? How will we will be chatting in the Jannah? Where will we be sitting in the Jannah? Depending on the, how, what will happen, the discussions, how we will remind, are we going to have the full awareness and feelings to remember everything happened in the dunya? Are we able to see all of our generations for our fathers and grandfathers? And what if, if they are in the hellfire? What will happen? You know, we'll from the Quran, we'll try and try to highlight about more or less about 12 to 15 major verses explaining these details so that whenever you want just to have this kind of tranquility you are facing you know difficulties in life obstacles problems just close your eyes and imagine the jannah okay sheikh you are wasting your time you believers no 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 habibi but i'm sorry for the example if someone promised you imagine that you are living in x country your father traveled two or five years before you and he is preparing the place there to that you will go. Still, you are living in your country, not come to the place of the dream country, for example. He's sending you photos, images about the beautiful place that you are going to go next year or two years later after he finishes his PR, his visa, his residency, his national, whatever, his citizenship. You are not there yet. But he's sending you just images about the place that you are supposed to be there. So when you face difficulty while working, if someone is you know, trying to humiliate you, someone is doing injustice for you, one of the best things to give you the power is doing what? Patience and dreaming about the place that you know that you are going to. How you will bring this kind of power, say? I'm leaving this factory, I'm leaving this country, I'm leaving this country because I'm going to live with my father. <laughs> Did we do this? Yes, patience, love. It. You know, this, by the way, this is the importance of to isolate yourself with dhikr and be connected with Allah to have the power and to dream about the place of pleasure and happiness, which is the Jannah, in dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Still, we have a lot of details to talk about the Jannah. 
Because one of the best thing, and let me finish with this, because it's more than one hour. Let me finish with this. The best thing that you will have to Jannah, you will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wow. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really something we can't imagine it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says clearly in the Quran, وَجُوهُ يَوْمَ إِذٍ نَاضِرًا نَضَارًا Which means, you know, like happy and cheerful and those kind of, you know, good, nice looking. قَالْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهَا نَاضِرًا They will be looking at their love. We don't know the how. Allah created us with some kind of faculties, abilities that we can't realize unless with the time and the place. And by the way, the most powerful faculty that we have is imagination. Are you with me? I mean, you, our limitations is amazing. Our muscles are limited in power. Our ability to run in high speed is limited. Our ability to hold or to carry a weight is limited. But what cannot be nearly, nearly limited is our imagination. Yet your imagination is bound, is limited with time and place. You can't imagine anything beyond time and place. Do you believe in this? You can't. It's impossible. Can you think about something that has no dimension, no color, no weight, no volume? Think about it. It's impossible. By the way, even the mental things, they are, uh, you know, visualized in your mind. Like, for example, when I tell you love. What is love? When I said love, imagine you imagine someone whom you love or you remembered a novel about love or you, uh, or you imagine the word in English, love or hub in Arabic. It's impossible. Immediately, you will attach it with something. You can't. You are bound with something. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond time and beyond the place. So we can't imagine Allah. We can't realize what Allah is. Why? Because Allah gave us limited abilities. In the day of judgment, after we are recreated, resurrected again with a new shape, a new body, but not a new memory, not a new feelings. The same feelings, same memory. <laughs> but a new, you know, Let's say creation, new shape, no sweat, no tiredness, no sleep, no hunger. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Part of the new things, basically an ability to see Allah. How? We don't know. Forget the how now. Imagine that you will be enjoying this. So inshallah, next time we'll be talking about this. Jazakumullah khairan. And if you don't mind, if you have questions about what I have lighted, let's start like a, a new system. Every time I start a new session, I might start with the questions about this session next time at the beginning. If you have questions before I could to do. Zakamullah khair. Thank you very much. Barakallah fikum. Salam alaikum rahmatullah. Wa iyaakum inshallah.